What's a win look like, Crash, for the NRL? I mean, what are the parameters? What are they hoping to happen? Well, look, it's a good question. They've started well, and this publicity has been fabulous. It's been a tidal wave, to be honest. We've yep. got five journalists over there, and they've filed some terrific stuff. But I still feel it's more about us than them at the moment. Like, in yeah. Australia, it's a win for young players, thinking, oh, I want to go to Vegas and all that. But, Tony, it's so hard to win this market. I'm looking over here at Robbie Slater, and it's taking me back to soccer story in the US. Yeah, they've been whacking World away Cup. for 60 years. And they've sort of cracked it in a funny sort of way. But, my God, that's been 60 tough years. Well, they years. went through a, a competition that actually folded back in the, the New York Cosmos, 70s into the 80, 80s. I remember seeing the Cosmos come over here. Palais played for them. George Best played for them. They had superstars. But that league actually folded. Then it was reinvented. Mm -hmm. And, they, like you said, they've been going for 60 years. And they, they know they're never going to be the number one. So there's no such thing, Candice, as a quick fix. And, and it's hard to, to, to judge it. Television ratings will mean something. They're after the betting dollar, which is a very cryptic sort of industry. Yeah. You never know how you're going, but it's a good start. Yeah, I mean, there's so many people from Australia going <laughs> over. I think there's 35,000 tickets sold at the moment. The capacity is 65,000. It'd be interesting to see how many are locals yep. that are going. Mm. Can we, before we keep going, can we just go back to Vegas again? Because I quite liked that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring us, Vegas back. Yeah. There we go. That feels much, much better. But Crash, in terms of success, like it's a five-year plan. It's, yeah. a, it's a long play. You're not going to measure success in one no, hit. No, no. A absolutely. And, and look, for, for rugby league, it's particularly tough. I thought cricket was a good chance of, of being the first new sport they take to because you've got an audience. There's millions and millions of Indians living there. You don't have to recruit anyone or win anyone over. Mm. They're there. But there is no natural-born American rugby league fan. So you are starting from ground zero, and it's a long way up. And that's well, where yeah. soccer is helped over there because there's a large South American... Mexicans population in Mexicans in the in the in the country that live there, so that that helps with the support of of that game, the MLS. But this is the point about selling it on, because we're, we're, we're selling our game to the US, I take it. You get all the pictures of our players <laughs> wearing NFL gear and, and hanging out at the basketball. Is that, you know, it's not really the right way around? Well, I know the Broncos, they're, they're right into their NFL. They have their own fantasy league um, competition do. within the club. They love Odell Beckham Jr. They just, they're huge NFL fans. Strangely enough, it's the reverse of that uh, images that what I think is the strongest part of the whole project and that is uh, auditioning failed NFL players for, for roles over here in a Mason Cox sort of way at Collingwood. Yep. That, it's a terrific idea. They've only got to... If they put 40 guys through a trial and you get three out of them, salary cap concessions, they'll, they'll bring beautiful stories over. Mason Cox was on American 60 Minutes. That's the, to me, that's the best short-term part of it, and I reckon that will work. Yeah, but, but Colin Scott, who, who of course, is Australian player yep. in the NFL, he's saying that scouts will be having a look and they'll love the likes of Joseph uh, Swali'i, which isn't exactly what we don't want, isn't it? Yeah, but, but Tony, it, it could happen, but there's thousands of Joseph Swali'i's, just as there was thousands of uh, Valentine Holmes's, which is why he didn't make it. Yep. Reese Walsh, to me, is a bit different. He, he's special. Mm. Lightning quick, brilliant feet. Yeah, but he, you don't he, want to lose him. But he could no, only no. really play a wide receiver. I yeah. mean, there's not too many positions that he could play. And, and, and I don't think he'll go because he's about to... A, a guy like him, Rugby League will lock him down, Robbie, yep. to a five-year deal worth about $7.5 million. It's so hard to walk away from. Yeah. And you yeah. talk about salary caps, so 13 million for the total roster over there, 260 million. Yeah. Like to crack the US mark is one hell of a feat. But yeah. like I said, AFL went to China uh, in 2018. And it you was had a great time. Incredible. Um, can't remember much of it, Robert. <laughs> <but. laughs> hey, what was it like, mate? Now, honestly, what was that? What was it like? Well, we went over there. Like you, you, they can't speak the language, so that's the hardest barrier for you. But uh, there was a billionaire over there that supported us well, in when China. When they could speak the language, you couldn't. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. You're in China. But, but, at, but at 1 a.m. I started to catch up a little bit <laughs> in terms of the language. But this stadium was about 20,000, and they were worried about this big spectacle yeah. and spending so much money. And the billionaire ended up buying all the tickets. Really? And uh, I'd 
finished a 12-hour session and they were handing me out on the streets. I said, I'm OK, I'm actually calling the game in a few hours. <laughs> but that's what happened. They ended up giving the tickets away to get people into the stadium yeah. to experience it. All right, you, you talk about the, the fun side of what you had in China. That's obviously one of the issues, that, and I'm sure it's been massively addressed by Peter Volandis uh, and the NRL ARL, isn't it? The, the behaviour. Now, you spoke, Crash, to Colin Funky Miller, who works in hotels in Vegas, about, you know, some of the pitfalls. Yeah, he has. And Funky's been working for 16 years over there. He's currently employed by the MGM Casino. And he said, like, uh, tell the players, no one gets better looking after midnight. And, 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 sure, and he said, no one turns into Brad Pitt at 3 a.m. He said, and I've never seen one edge Brad back rower come here and turn into Brad Pitt. But he said, but the serious side was, he said, look, every night in Vegas, there's one hotel incident where someone uh, accidentally gets involved with a sex worker who robs them in their hotel room, the honeypot syndrome, and he said, it is real. People say, don't treat these guys like kids. He said, but it's adults getting caught. He said, it is real. And he said, if you have one... If it happens to one person, it sort of brings down the whole the show whole a bit. Thing. 